What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I finally got done reading Transmetropolitan. Did I like it? Did I hate it? Stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm going to do a spoiler-free review on the absolute Transmetropolitan by Warren Ellis. This was uh, part of the DC Comics Vertigo imprint, and... It took me forever to get through these books. A lot of people have said that, uh, you know, this was a great run. I heard great things about it, but it just really took a long time. And I didn't really appreciate it until the third book. I like Warren Ellis. I enjoy a lot of his stuff. And I should have liked this more than I did. But I think the problem that I didn't like about this is that there wasn't really an overarching story until around the second half of this run. The artwork was good. The uh, the writing was great. I mean, this was like sex, drugs, alcohol, vulgar. It's like a twisted look into our future. Like think New York City in the year, you know, three thousand or something. And like the a lot of the first book just focused on world building. It was kind of showing you commercials and showing you what was on TV, what was on the news. It was just painting a picture of the environment. And like I don't know. Sex puppets is a big thing that's on TV, which is like these puppets that are always having sex. And it's like kids can see there's the streets are filled with filth and new technology. And it goes over kind of procedures that people have done to themselves where you can kind of look half alien. Uh, they have procedures where you can leave your body and just turn into this mist. So a lot of it was that kind of world building in the beginning of the book, which was OK. But I, I got sick of reading advertisements and even though they were kind of funny and painted a picture of the world that uh, Ellis was trying to, to describe I was a little bit over all of that our main character is spider Jerusalem you see uh, on the front of this here where he kind of looks like this wild man with this long hair and long beard well he only looks like that for about 20 seconds right spider is a journalist and he is a damn good journalist he just seeks out the truth and he doesn't care who it pisses off what feathers get ruffled or whatever uh when we meet spider he comes back from this five-year hiatus he's been living in the mountains and we kind of piece together that he might have got himself into some trouble prior to this and uh now he's back so immediately he shaves his head exposing his spider tattoo he gets these cool new glasses which record and take pictures and we start getting an actual story here with the presidential election. So it's called Transmetropolitan. It is a politics heavy book, but it's not like a politics book where it's it's telling you you should be Republican or you should be Democrat. It really just focuses on corruption with uh, authority figures in the presidency and, and things like that. So it doesn't really paint a picture left or right, but it just deals with politics in that aspect. Spider Jerusalem, like I mentioned, he's a journalist. He writes uh, a column called I Hate It Here, and it's published by The Word, which is like the big news publication. And he's almost like a little superstar type of journalist. He he pisses so many people off that it get, gives him national attention, and he, he gets this following that obviously read his column. He ends up getting these assistants, and um, one of them ends up leaving him and becomes a nun, but she comes back. I think her name is Chanel. And uh, the other one is uh, the niece of his editor. But I, I love his interaction with them. He, he'll say things like, come to me, my filthy assistants. He's always calling them filthy assistants. He's always getting fucked up on drugs. Uh, he's, he's just a wild dude, man. But, you know, they grow to love him later on in the story. And so do you as a reader. He, he's definitely an honest guy. He's definitely a good guy at heart. He's just kind of a little bit, little bit crazy, a little eccentric. The current president, he nicknames, he nicknames the beast and it kind of sticks with everybody. Uh, but there's this new one, uh, president, uh, or Senator Callahan, who's running for president, who they call the smiler. He's always smiling no, no matter what. And you know what they say? Never trust somebody who's always smiling. Literally always has a big, huge grin on his face. And Spider finds out that he's not the person that should be president. He doesn't have any beliefs or any morals. He only wants to be president to be the president. So he does everything in his power to sabotage his campaign, but he still gets elected and Spider gets pissed at all the public. Like, you voted for this guy? So that, that's interesting. And then the overarching story is basically trying to take down this corrupt president, who he, he is corrupt. Once I got to the third book, I couldn't put it down. I read it in like 
two sittings. Like literally today, I ran through like more than half of the book. So it really started to pick up once we had a story. In the beginning books, just that world building was a little much for me and it kind of took me a while to get through these first two volumes. Talking about it now, and, and like I said, finishing that third book, I had a greater appreciation for it. I definitely like how uh, it still kind of rings true today. I think the last issue was uh, published in 2001. So 18 years later, it's still the landscape of like the world we live in. So uh, Warren Ellis did a great job. I read some of his forwarding in this book about what will he ever pick up the character again. And he's like, hell no, I will never revisit that crazy lunatic spider Jerusalem. So I thought that was pretty funny. That's kind of the gist of what I wanted to talk about. Let's look at these books in detail. We'll look at the slip cases, the actual hardcover. We'll, we'll flip through the artwork of all three volumes. So you could get a better idea of what Transmetropolitan is all about. All right, so like I mentioned, here is the front, or I guess the back of the slipcase for Volume 1. And you can see Spider, how we first meet him. Grizzly man coming out of the, uh, the, the mountain, tattooed all over his body. And then, of course, we'll get to see the tattoo on his head. He lives in filth. He has this crazy two-headed cat he lives with that pisses on everything. That's his bowel disruptor. He always uses it on as many people as possible, which does what you think. He shoots them with it, and it makes them uh, violently have <laughs> diarrhea. Here's the spine of the slipcase, and here is Spider. Once he's back in society, this is what I was talking about. I forgot what they call it. Tr Transgestial or something? Uh, some people can make themselves look all like the gray aliens. He sits on crazy rooftops, but he's not perched like Batman. He's writing his column, and he's exposing the truth. Here's the top. Here's the bottom. These, uh, This one had a cover price of $125. And then here is the front of the hardcover for Volume 1. They do a lot of this type of artwork where it's just jam-packed full of things. Almost like a Where's Waldo book. Filth, like I said, it's the future. You never see him without a cigarette. This guy is constantly smoking cigarettes more than he's doing drugs or, or whoring around. Here's the spine of the hardcover and the back. So that's the society we're living in. You know, the alien thing is something that humans are doing to themselves, almost like uh, body, uh, what do you want to call it? I don't know. I don't know the term. I don't want to offend anybody. All right, so anyway. So here's the front. This is kind of the logo. I don't know really what it means. It's kind of like have a nice day. They tend to end the issues with it, and sometimes it'll be smiling, it'll be laughing, it'll have a, a beer, whatever, depending on the situation. All right, so here's Spider. I guess this is when he just finally, yeah. He finally gets his hair cut. He finally gets a shower. He comes out. You're going to see a lot of expletives in this book. A lot of... It's a mature read. Even the cat with the two faces is smoking the whole time. These are kind of cool. You drive through these things to get to other parts of the city. And I forget, like, you know, only certain people have access and stuff. You can see he's already messing with... Uh, politicians blowing smoke out his nose tends to do that a lot here goes his first assistant see and this is what i'm talking about just kind of showing what the city and what the world is all about <laughs> this was written in like the mid to late 90s and you can see uh, they're, they're constantly smoking cigarettes, man. See, just painting that city and that world. I don't even know if I caught the name of the city, if that's supposed to be New York City. What's funny about this, we learn, I think, in book two or three, that it's so far in the future. Like, we don't really know when stuff happens. So they just say, oh, over 10 years ago, o over 50 years ago. It's kind of like the movie Idiocracy, too, a little bit. Like, it's far in the future, but people are somehow dumber. There goes our guy Ca Callahan, who becomes president. See how he never smiles? <laughs> when, when he first moves, it freaks Spider out. Like, he's sitting there like a statue, you know? And that guy, Callahan, man, he's a bad dude for sure. 
This is his other assistant now that he gets who is uh, his editor's niece. Yeah, then there's stuff like this where it's just, uh, I guess like I said, it's more world building. It was like a whole, a couple whole issues like that. Like you're reading from his column and he's just kind of, look at this. He's just kind of explaining the world as it is. Like most absolute editions, look at this. Like most absolute editions, you have extras in the back, sketches and scripts and stuff. Let's take a look at volume two. All right, volume two, the slipcase has Spider walking through the city, which he likes to do often. He'll say, let's work, and he's just walking through the city. He just kind of has to feel the vibe. And there's the back. The top is just like the other volume, but blue. And then the actual hardcover. So, you know, going through these with you guys, I can see why they did absolute editions. They, they had this oversized artwork because there's a lot going on in this world. Again, sitting on top of some weird structure, writing his column. Look, a lot, little details going on everywhere. So the artwork is consistent throughout. His assistants, they work with him. You know, he ends up uh, coming back from the mountain. He starts publishing his column. He starts getting paid again. He gets put in these, you know, penthouse kind of suites with his assistants. You know, we see him go from the bottom to the top to the bottom all over again. And, you know, you, we know early on that's not what he's all about. He actually doesn't like being in those penthouses. He likes being on the streets and, and being, like, where the stories are. There is violence going on, for sure. He, he's gets, he gets fucked up on drugs a lot, but he kind of stops. Look at this. This cat's pissing on his head. <laughs> There's TVs on the floor. So here's what I was talking about with that smiley face, how it ends the comics. And look, it's got like a mouthful of, like, he just, it just ate a bird. Here's another, like, us reading his column and, and catching everything from his perspective. This was cool. These blur suits, which is kind of like this camouflage that assassins can wear and such. It's out there, man. See, here's another one of those issues. And each page is, like, drawn by someone else. I, I found those kind of... A chore to read, to be to be honest. Hmm. They show like a little bit of a uh, not pornography, but you know what I mean. It's it's a mature read for sure. All right, let's take a look at the last volume. Okay, so here's the side of volume three on the slipcase. You can see Callahan. He's up there. He's basking in his presidency. And here's the end, a very somber look at Spider sitting outside. He's not in the city. He's by a big tree in the fields. And the hardcover for the actual book. He's got the bowel disruptor. He's got some liquor. A lot of craziness going on in the background, as always. And here's the back. Yeah, everyone's getting drunk, making out. Society is kind of, like I said, it's like uh, how we how we're gonna look in the future, basically. Uh, this was hard to read about these child prostitutes and this kind of like whole ring of underage prostitution is crazy, man. And it gets Spider pissed. Like he doesn't like that. You know what I mean? He's got morals and he knows what's right and what's wrong. He tends to be naked a lot. So this is the, the volume that I read pretty quick, man. It really started moving when he when we started having purpose and story. Like we now we know the world that we're in. Now what are we gonna do about it? It's kind of the vibe.
All right, so I don't want to spoil anything here, but I do want to see at the end. It's funny about these Vertigo books that I, I, I didn't really uh, know about them growing up, but it looks like they had action figures and stuff, like mi little mini statues. Here's some spider with the cat and everything. That's funny. That's the action figure. This looks like a little statue of him on the toilet yelling at his editor. You can get the glasses. That's funny. All right, guys, that's the review. So did I love it or did I hate it? I had a hard time reading it in the beginning, and I grew to love it towards the end. With that being said, would I ever reread it? Probably not. There's too much good material that has that's sitting unread on my shelves. So uh, I probably won't reread this. Um, I think a buddy of mine wants these books too, so I might pass it on to him. Let me know what you thought about Transmetropolitan in the comments below. If you've already read it or if it's something that you're interested in getting into, let me know your thoughts. Make sure to you know hit that like button. I hate saying smash that like. You'll never hear me say smash that like button. Hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to drop me a line, a comment, just to help support the channel. And uh, subscribe to the channel for more daily content. You are going to want to hit the bell because we do impromptu live shows. We do uh, daily content. And you want to make sure you don't miss any of this stuff here. Because if you miss it, it's going to take you a long time to catch up with all this content we drop. Thanks for watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace. Alright guys, so I'm going to do a spoiler... Uh, Alright guys, I'm gonna- fuck.